and I'm going to be working on a sort of continuation to the McCoy Logging Company. I believe this to be where they stored our logs. This entire area right here. I've mo put up the fence for it so far. And I've excavated a small portion of it. Where there will be a parking lot for the most part. There's a lot of logs that are stored in this area. And so I have to get the um, patterns on the ground as close to it as I can. That is the goal at least. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen at least. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Place it about right here. And some of it I have a hard time seeing. It's a little bit hard because I'm using the map online instead of the Project Zomboy game since it's a little bit hard to run both games at the same time.
the logs here won't be identical to how they are in Project Zomboid. It's, but I think this is a pretty good compromise. At least it shows what it's supposed to look like. Some of the larger logs is hard is gonna be I can't really replicate as easy as I can the smaller logs. Because even with the larger trees such as a um jungle tree or with a dark oak, it's just made up of a whole bunch of smaller logs. One of the good thing about this things about this area is this is a good place that you can find a lot of logs if you're not going to cut down trees, for example. They're already cut down for you. You might have to change them into planks in quite a few cases, but you should be able to find those in the McCoy Logging Company. The only downside is you have to transport it and last time I checked there still aren't any cars in Project Zomboid so that means carrying them. So while you aren't going to be cutting down any trees you still have to transport them to wherever you're going to. So it's, there's a downside to that as well. Still, it is an alternative, so. I'll fix this once I've gotten the trees right, but I need this to make sure that the trees are, these logs in particular are in, are laying in the right direction. And that means I need something solid on the other side to, um, to click on, basically. 
And this allows me to place the logs on their side. With the other part I was using the fence for that. But with this one I just have open air unless I place a, lo a temporary block. While I use this right here. And once the rest of the, the logs are in place, I'll go around and I'll fix how the back looks. There's one test. No. Okay, never mind. That's weird. For some reason my skin got reset. Biome settlers. Hmm. Maybe this is why.
I'm trying to remember where my skin was. I was using the Eskimo one. Oh well. Let's go with the third dogger. In this area, there's also a trailer. I'm gonna be placing that in next. <coughs> this we should be over by one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, down, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifty, sixteen. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, down, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen.
16 in length and 6 across even 4 for the interior And this is supposed to represent the tarp that covers the trailer. In the Project Zomboid game, it's the tarp which has the logo for McCoy Logging Company. But it's hard to pull that off. I could do it for the roof, but then it would make the rest of it look a little bit odd, worse. It would look a bit strange on the interior. Because you'd have this as green and this as metal, and whereas this looks strange, but not so bad. Let's see what did I do for the closed containers over here in the McCoy Logging Company. Oh yeah, I use brick. Oh, you, it's a uh, black wool. I'm using the city texture pack, and each of the blocks are different. And for this, I use the um, black wool, which in this texture pack sort of looks like this right here. Because there's not really a good way to actually pull off a closed uh, container. And there's nothing in this container. It's empty for the moment. If you secure this place, then it become then it can be turned into a um, house. If you knock down the entrance and then replace what you destroy right here with a a wall with a door frame, then it can be turned into a um, home, allowing the entrance and exit. But you just have to make sure that this place is secure since there's from that point on there's only one way in and out unless you keep a sledgehammer in there to break down the wall. But it is a viable option. If you're looking to make this place a uh, Ford operating base to where you pick up logs that you need and carry it to other areas. It's not necessary to do this, but if you don't do it, then you may find zombies wandering around, depending on how you set up the Project Zomboid game. I'm 
a great amount of the tactics that you use in Project Design Boy depends upon how you set up the world to be generated. Dying in the game doesn't end the world, even in single player. You can still use the same world. You just uh, generate into the world as a new character. But whatever you've worked on, whatever you've done in the world, be it destroying something, that still persists until you generate a new world. And you can generate multiple worlds. So you could have a world in which the zombies have the statistics for a classic um, Romero movie where they're slow uh, they shamble around it is just not so great or you can go with uh, more faster zombies and depending upon how virulent the disease is you could make it extremely easy to get the disease at which point every single combat you get into in terms of melee has a good chance that you might end up with a disease. Or you could set it up more like Resident Evil, which by the time your character gets into the games most of the time, uh, the disease is not as virulent, meaning your character is unlikely to die from the disease, but the zombies are still a danger. Which means that the chance of catching the disease is extremely high early on, but burns out fairly quickly. And all this depends on how you want to set it up. You can set up the number of zombies and also where you're more likely to run into zombies. And it can be urban focused in which you're more likely to run into zombies in the various towns on the main map. Or you can spread out the zombies, distribute the zombies roughly evenly, which means that you can easily run into a zombie in the middle of the forest and you can easily do that even with an urban focus that doesn't mean the zombies won't go there it just means that it's not as likely whereas if you distribute them evenly you're equally likely to run into them anywhere so that greatly affects what tactics um, you should use or even even then there's an individual choice too since some tactics works well for some people well where others do not there is one thing that relatively stays in common and that is the fact that this might be a uh, zombie apocalypse game but it is not a run and gun game it's a very fun game but you can't go into this game expecting to run from zombie and zombie and just kill them if you do so, you're going to quickly find out it's not going to work. One of the major factors is your stamina, health, and all that. Meaning, you have to factor in how many times you're going to swing a melee weapon, for example you swing it too many times and you're going to get exhausted rather quickly so a prolonged fight is not a good idea and many times 
it's often better to run from the zombies or not get their attention in the first place. Which can be difficult to do depending upon the settings. But if you see more than 10 zombies coming towards you, it is not a good idea to fight them. Heck, if you see, sometimes if you see more than four zombies coming at you, it's not always a good idea to fight them either. Because uh, not only will the noise the zombies make bring in other zombies, which means that you can probably expect more zombies to join them, but the fighting will also do it as well. Which means those four could easily turn into ten or more. And this gets even worse if you start using um, firearms. Firearms are effective. There's no denying that. You can easily take out several zombies with a shotgun blast. Or a few shotgun blasts, depending. But that's not the issue. The issue is not how dangerous or how much damage the guns do, but how much noise they make. And this is a game in which you do not want to attract attention to yourself. So if you play Project Zombo, it is it's the kind of game in which you don't necessarily have to play all out stealth, but you you don't want to go all, all flashy. The person who garners attention from the zombies tend to be the ones who die fairly quickly. And this again goes back to Sun Tzu with victory goes to he who knows when to fight and when not to fight. And more often than not, it's not a good idea to fight unless you absolutely have to. That also is what makes the game interesting in that it's both tactics and strategy. Many zombie games are simply tactics. And planning, long run term planning is not always as emphasized. And I don't mean that they don't emphasize it at all. Some of them emphasize um, building a base, for example. But building a base is not long term strategy. That is still short-term strategy. Long, what I mean by long-term strategy is not how you will last a couple of months, but how you can last years in this game and with persistence. Basically, being persistently seized by an unending enemy, zombies that will not retreat. Cannot you cannot break the morale of them, and they they don't need to worry about their own resources. They don't need to worry about feeding or res basically uh, food. They won't starve to death. They won't get tired. They don't need to sleep. So many of them will usually be escape this area. Or, as I said, short term strategy. Resident Evil is an example of this. There's no, no real base building. So 
some of them do have base building. The dead zone, I believe, is was a dead state. That has um, more of a long-term strategy. But this is one that you definitely have to plan, not just a month in advance, but also a year in advance. You have to set up areas in which you'll be able to have food, not just in the summer or the spring, but also throughout the winter. Because you could easily set everything up, have everything perfect, and then starve to death throughout the winter. And that is basically what I mean by the difference between tactics and strategy. And how some zombie games focus mainly and almost exclusively on the tactics, not so much on the strategy side. And this is a pretty good game for focusing on both. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Some of these areas, like this right here, I'm leaving because that is where Grass Patch is. Six one two three four five six out here. Kind of hard to make a small diamond.
four. There's two of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It might be easier to just throw down this um dirt, for example, wherever. But it's I'm trying to make it as close as I can to it, and by counting it out, by measuring pretty much everything, it makes it easier to get the dimensions just right. Six, seven, eight, one, two. two four, five, six, seven, eight. And the problem, however, with that is, is that even when I try to get the dimensions right, I know that it's going to be off. And this is unavoidable when translating one medium to another. The best I can do is try to keep it as close as I can. and just work with it as well as I can. Sometimes I need to make some alterations to it that takes it a little bit further away, but it helps balance things out. I had to place it back. Take it off to this side. Two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. here.
and what I'm translating from is one block in Minecraft into a 4x4 pattern and well one block in Project Zomboid into a 4x4 pattern in Minecraft and that is to help protect some of the smaller areas 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 and part of that is to protect against small rooms such as closets which might be virtually eliminated if I did a one for one and that is simply because the smallest wall that I can do in Minecraft is a one meter w thick wall which means that the more walls inside a house the more distorted the house becomes if I did a one-to-one -one, which requires a one to four by four I want to make sure that those smaller rooms and sometimes hallways are better protected rather than being just either squeezed into something smaller and being distorted in that direction or eliminated altogether In a way that also makes this interesting since you have to figure out how to translate. And the translation is what brings about creativity and finding new ways to look at situations. Two, three, four, five, six, maybe. four Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not just eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are some rather large logs here. And maybe I should put this out one more, depending. One, two, three, four. No, this will work. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. chance I'll expand the fence so I can keep an eye on making it. The fence here is not um, one that you can climb. Some of the lower fences you can. But bear in mind with the, some of the lower fences the zombies can climb the lower fences too.
It's not easy to do the um, ties that are around it. Neither doesn't look like it or looks like something else. So I'm just going to leave it like this for the moment so I can figure out something different. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, come to a first stopping place. And what I've done so far is a lot of uh, excavation and expansion on the I haven't filled in this area with sand yet, but that is going to what I'm going to be I'm doing a lot of excavation for this one more than building and replacing tiles with certain patterns on the ground. So I'm going to take one short break and then I'll be back continuing to work on this logging area. Thank you very much for watching so far and I'll be right back. <laughs> 